and that new ones are set up. Nigerian workers celebrate May Day, set agenda for incoming administration. In the private sector, we need to deal with it. We need to deal with the issue very Vice President elect says the Buhari administration will tackle social economic problems. Nigerian military and the United States counterpart collaborate towards the study of Ebola vaccines. Good evening, a warm welcome. Welcome to the NTA Network News. I am Rhoda Obo. And we'll begin with the May Day celebrations. The leadership of the organized labor has pledged to work with the president-elect General Muhammad Buhari and the incoming administration to evolve policies that are people-oriented for sustainable development. The pledge was made during a May Day rally held at the Eagle Square, Abuja. Correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro reports. May Day is celebrated every 1st of May all over the world as Workers' Day. Considering the theme of this year, the working class, democratic consolidation and economic revival, charting a way forward to national rebirth, the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress, leading other affiliate unions said, what Nigerian workers are celebrating is a new Nigeria that is set for a free transition arising from a peaceful, free and fair 2050 general elections instituted by the outgoing government. While recognizing the contributions of Jonathan administration, the unions, however, regretted that terrorism, unemployment, poor power supply, corruption, among others, are still evident which the incoming administration must tackle. As an oil-producing country, we must have functional internal refining capacity so that we can at the very least meet up our petroleum internal petroleum consumption needs. Government has a responsibility to ensure that the existing refineries work and that new ones are set up. And the incoming government must function out effective ways of checking wastages of our resources. The massive test of theft of our oil, the scandalous incidents of monetary laundering, over invoicing, double invoicing of contract dump, dumping on foreign goods and excessive borrowing, especially on favorable terms, etc., are activities that must be curtailed immediately. Other unions equally set agenda for the incoming administration. The workers in Nigeria are involved to a very great extent in the generation of wealth, but the conditions of our living is very, very dismal. And uh, we're expecting that since we have a new government coming, we'll be able to partner with them to start afresh in the area of rebuilding the living standard for Nigerian workers. Right. Your salary cannot take you home, you can't even do anything. Because you see our workers, as you go to banks, you see a lot of workers on loan. President Jonathan, represented by the Minister of Labor, delivered the message of the President to workers. The attainment of a national vision will not be possible without the dedication, commitment and work and patriotism of Nigerian workers. It is our joint responsibility collectively. The central message from the May Day rally is for all Nigerians to work together to consolidate on the democratic gain of President Jonathan administration so as to rebuild the fragile economy in Abuja. Meanwhile, since the amalgamation of Nigeria in 1914, labor unions have been in the center stage fine-tuning major policies of government to the benefit of the masses. As workers mark the May Day 2015 celebration, correspondent again Emmanuel Ayimiro examines the role of labor movement in nation building. The history of labor movement in Nigeria dates back to 1912 when government employees formed the Civil Service Union. Since then, that movement has evolved. From the Michael Imudu led general strike of railway workers of 1945, Kokori led Nupeng's anti June 12 election annulment strike of 1993, incessant ASU strikes, the Oshimole led strike on fuel price increases. In worker welfare, the OMA and a seller led anti fuel subsidy removal of 2012 all are examples of protest against government policies by the labor unions. 
with all these engagements of labor with government the unions say the movement has been in the struggle for a better society there couldn't have been any development without the contribution of workers and trade unions the nigerian labor movement uh, its pioneers have actively participated for the academic staff union of universities the union leader says ASU has attracted more funding to universities. Over the years, we have been able to make significant you know, uh, progress in terms of uh, uh, university autonomy and academic freedom. The Association of Senior Staff of Banks, Insurance and other financial institutions is not left out as the union helped with policy guidelines for a stronger banking system. Labor constantly sensitize this regulator to ensure that whatever is needed to keep this bank running at the level they should is constantly there. We've participated in the last national conference. We have also been contributing our quota in the transport sector of the economy. Whatever government decides in its implementation, the way the inputs of labor they, are, they be in the field, in the offices, and everywhere to ensure that uh, those good things that were put on paper are translated as uh, the product of that policy. It's kudos to the lower union. By May 29, a new government is expected to be sworn in. How is the Nigerian Labour Congress that is now factionalized going to work with the incoming government? I've started um, reaching them. Uh, especially the veterans have met them about two weeks ago uh, to persuade them to come back to the family and uh, let's move the Nigerian labor movement in Nigeria forward. Leader and as a present leadership, uh, we are doing, doing everything possible uh, to try to convince our colleagues to see reason why we need to work together. With the contributions of the movement to nations building, it is believed that labor unions remain a strong platform for the unification and emancipation of Nigerian workers from the oppressive tendencies of the employers. In Abuja, Emmanuel Ayemi Road. As the Eagle Square in the capital city became the center of attraction on the occasion of Workers' Day celebration, correspondent Ifanyi Ezumba went to town to feel the pulse of the mood of the period in Abuja. A drive around Abuja metropolis shows that movement of people and vehicle was light. The turnout of workers at the Eagle Square was not as it used to be in the previous years. Workers have not received their April salary until this on the first of May. But then with the incoming administration, we have already believed that very soon things will get better. No any of the staff of any ministry showing his happiness because we were not having anything to at least show our appreciation with. Some say government has tried in terms of providing basic salary for civil servants, but there is still much to be done. When you pay your workers as at when due, when you allow the welfare of your workers to be priority to you, then the workers will be able to serve you better. We need more than just basic salary, accommodation, transportation. 18,000 minimum wage is nothing to happen, but because of the current value of Naira, we employ the incoming government to look at our plight. While workers are agitating increased wage, others use the opportunity to engage in brisk business. As Nigerians mark Workers' Day, it is our expectation that government will address the welfare of workers and the living condition of the people improved. In Abuja, Ifanyi, Izumba, NC News. Still staying with the May Day celebrations, various labor movements have continued to sensitize workers on the need to strive towards policies that have direct impact on the Nigerian masses. As Nigerian workers join the rest of the world to commemorate the 2015 Workers' Day, guest on NTA's current affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria, examines the role of Nigerian workers in governance and their challenges. Correspondent Abdul Malik Adio monitored the program and our reports. Mission of Nigeria in 1914, labor unions have been in the center stage fine-tuning major policies of the federal government to the benefit of the masses. Discussants on the program enumerated the role of the Nigerian workers in governance and their expectations from the incoming government. That the process of development in every country is actually driven by workers. <coughs> we are the engine of development. 
in a societies where production is predominant, we generate the wealth. And therefore, I can say effectively, even within the context of Nigeria, when you look at all our sector, be it the education sector, be it the health sector, workers have contributed effectively to the development of our society. Today, occasion, which is like a Christmas day for the workers, should be a day to send message to Nigerians and the government of Nigeria, especially the incoming government, that there is need for the workers' pay to be enhanced. Everything has to do with planning and giving people what they need. Responsibility should start from the roots. The government should be responsible enough to take care of those working. The employer of labor should be responsible enough. They should take care you know, of, 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 the, of the workers. The moment the workers are taken proper care of, the tendency is there for people to do what they should do. He has to also stressed the need for Nigerian government to provide an enabling working environment to enhance productivity. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adiu, NTA News. In the meantime, the Senate President, David Mark, has challenged Nigerian workers to uphold the sanctity of productivity, wealth creation and patriotism in the discharge of their responsibilities. In a message of solidarity to mark the May Day celebration, Senator Mark appreciated the unrelenting efforts of the Nigerian workers for peace and national unity, thereby providing the platform in which the country rests. He enjoined them to deviate from the punch for industrial action, which according to him has done incalculable damage to the social economic life of the country. Senator Mark said dialogue remains the best option for any disagreement or crisis. Meanwhile, commentaries on the occasion of the Labor Day celebrations sue for intensified labor government relations for good governance. Vice President elect Professor Yemi Oshibajo says Buhari administration will tackle headlong critical sectors of the nation's economy for Nigerians to feel the impact of governance. Correspondent Anthony Forza reports that the Vice President elect stated this in a lecture he delivered at a platform organized by the Covenant Christian Center in Abuja. The report. Professor Yemi Osibajo, who x rayed the state of the nation, was emphatic that the Buhari administration will tackle the issue of corruption headlong, saying there will be no sacred cows. The major problem with the way our country is run is because some people want to run it for private profit, and that is so for a vast majority of those who find themselves, especially in positions where they can control what approvals are given, what things are given. So many people look at public office in particular as opportunities for corruption, but that is the same also in the private sector. We need to deal with it. We need to deal with this issue very seriously. On power, education, health, employment and wealth creation, Professor Osimbajo noted that emphasis will be placed on these sectors giving their critical role to national growth and development. 21st century work skills are what are required today. We need certain skills. Anyone who goes to school today, from primary school all the way up to university, ought to be equipped to be able to deal with the challenges that we're seeing in this century. Challenges of technology. People ought to be trained properly from when they're young. Critical thinking. Numeracy skills. Strong numeracy skills. The Vice President-elect, however, assured Nigerians that their administration will be driven by equity justice and fairness. Anthony Forson, NTA News. House members elect want dynamic and responsible leadership irrespective of zoning. Details after the break. I want more. Welcome back. In case you just joined us, you're watching the network news on the NTA. Now, our report just reaching us says, following the resolve of government to pay independent petroleum marketers the outstanding payments for the importation of the premium motor spirits, PMS, the National Association of the Road Transport Owners, NATO, has called on its members to resume loading of petroleum products to ease the sufferings imposed on Nigerians. Executive Secretary of the Association in an interview with correspondent Ali Kabiru also urged government to remain committed to its pronouncement.
Government on this part should sustain the payment because we think that is the only way that this face off will be 18 of the past. Because the, if the pay marketers and marketers don't pay transporters, it's going to be a problem. The association spokesman equally charged the independent marketers to also be prompt in paying the transporters. To walk by allowing the trucks to go to the various loading points and to commence loading of petroleum product, believing that marketers will also commence immediate payment to transporters. Now we turn our attention now to some legislative matters. The incoming eight assembly have been advised to embark on their new challenges at the National Assembly with due diligence, integrity and professionalism. Deputy Senate President Ike Kwemadu, who is also the chairman of the National Institute for Legislative Studies, the organizers of the five-day induction certificate course for the new legislators, gave this charge at the presentation of certificates for legislators elect. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunoye reports. Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwaramadu loaded the initiative by the management of the National Institute for Legislative Studies to organize such a program, saying that it has given the new lawmakers a solid foundation on which to build. I also expect that you will continue to benefit from the capacity building programs organized by NEL. I'm aware that this is in its 2015 work plan, several follow-up training programs that are more detailed and specialized. The legislators elect highlighted what they have gained from the five day induction certificate course. The whole uh, process was wonderful, uh, quite academic. Uh, there was no dull moment at all because all the uh, resource persons were outstanding. I believe that um, my joining the upper chamber is just like a, a continuity and to see, to be more advanced in legislative. It's like a, a little seminar before the job itself and then why most of it will be learning on the job itself. The topic has today helped us to understand what constituency projects are all about and most importantly the legislative aids, their primary functions and all that. So learning is not just only reading the books, you also have to relate to others, you know, see if we can come together, collective effort is what can make Nigeria. The Deputy Senate President, supported by the Director General Mills, Dr. Ladi Hamalai, presented certificates to a cross-section of legislators elect. From the International Conference Center, Abuja, Dennis Adegunloy, NTA News. The beauty of politicking or grandstanding is the provision of good governance for the populace. A major player is the National Assembly that has for the past 16 years fashioned Nigeria's polity positively, which it intends to build upon even though it has lost about 70% of its old members in the just concluded general elections. This is the standpoint of Senate leader Victor Ndoma Egba and Senator-elect Jeremiah Useni on NTA's current affairs program, Moments for Thought. Interest that stares you, stares at you in the face all of the time is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am, for instance, an advocate for a Marshall Plan for the Northeast Zone. I am not from the Northeast, but I know that if you tackle the problems of the Northeast Zone, for instance, you have substantially tackled the problems of Nigeria. Two sides must trust each other. The first good thing the president-elect did was to visit us during our training and seek for such cooperation. And we also say we we'll support him. I mean, we should partner. The program comes up tonight at 11 o'clock on the network service of the NTA. Ekiti State Governor Mr. Ayodili Fayoshi has promised to shift grounds on contentious issues to resolve the political crisis in the state. Governor Fayoshi gave the assurance at a meeting brokered by a legal icon, Are Afe Babalola and Ekiti State Elders Council. Samuel Jansing has details met with the governor and the PDP caucus in the state assembly. The meeting, among other things, secured a commitment from the security agencies for the safety of the APC lawmakers, who were also advised to return to base with an assurance of peace and security. The governor himself is ready to shift ground on
on controversial issues. We also know that everybody wants peace. They want peace, we want peace. The state governor, while expressing appreciation for the efforts of the elders, promised to shift grounds on contentious issues. Pursue peace and the government which stands as the managing group for the entity must do everything possible to ensure we have peace. Embattled speaker Dr. Dewale Omiri in a telephone interview expressed reservation on the security arrangement. If the things that we are supposed to guide us is saying we should move where we are going through a war, through a career, through money, to Ado, up to the Ado, not capable or not up to the task. This is why members were worried. Nadekiti Samuel Johnson, NTA News. A bipartisan group of the House member-elect known as the Patriots say its desire for a dynamic and responsible leadership in the eight House of Representatives irrespective of zoning arrangements. The group made this known at a news briefing at the end of the induction course for the newly elected legislators in Abuja. National Assembly correspondent Aisha Tusango Abdullahi reports. The group said they are not supporting any candidate in particular, but that they are interested in setting the parameters for those aspiring to lead them. This is a normal trend that follows general elections and as part of the transition of members elect into properly constituted members in the chamber. The parties intend to conduct an integrity test for interested candidates wishing to contest leadership positions of the House of Representatives through a debate. We hope party will now look at this historical effort and make a decision that will not go contrary to the wish of the majority of the members. The group has a mission to spearhead the rebirth of credible parliamentary democracy, specifically in the House of Representatives, but remains a vibrant and vigilant multi-party institution committed to bequeathing the values of freedom, peace and development to the 21st century generation of Nigerians and beyond. Meanwhile, Representative Mohammed Mongono from Borno State says he intends to contest the leadership of the House of Representatives. Any member can occupy the office of the Speaker. It's only first among equals. In Abuja, Aisha Tu Zongwa Abdullahi, NTA News. In the meantime, the Democratic People's Party, DPP, has advised the incoming administration of General Muhammad Buhari to make the fight against corruption, insecurity and the quest of national unity his priorities. The party's acting national chairman, Garrison Benson, gave the advice while addressing the party's national executive committee members in Abuja. Correspondent Edino Justice has the details. DPP is one of the political parties that participated in the just concluded general elections. Its next member comprising national executives and state chairmen gathered to review their outing. The chairman, who lamented that the party did not win any seat, expressed consolation that the APC presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, whom they supported, won. Because if anything goes wrong, Nigeria will say about you are part of it, you adopted him as your presidential candidate. And so we will do the needful. Because if they cop corruption from the national treasuries and manage our resources well, it will create wealth. And by extension, the multi economic multiplier effect of creating wealth is equally opening up a lot of vistas for people to get employed. He equally commended President Goodluck Jonathan, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC for conducting a peaceful election, saying it is worthy of emulation by Africans. On the party's future, the acting chairman said they won't collapse into APC, but watch the political evolution in the country. From the DPP Secretariat, Gerki Apuja, Edina Justice, NTA News. And also, President-elect General Muhammadu Buhari has been urged to justify his electoral victory by ensuring that his campaign promises are fulfilled to Nigerians. The National Chairman of the National Conscience Party, NCP, Dr. Yunusa Tanko, stated this at the end of the 52nd National Executive Committee's meeting of the party held in Abuja. Fimuti Yusuf reports. 
The 2015 general elections may have come and gone, but the National Conscience Party believes that there are lingering issues. These include the permanent voter cards, smart card readers, and heavy monetization of election process. Let us congratulate the Nigerian people who are the real winners of the general election. The next meeting congratulated President Goodluck Jonathan for conceding defeat and called on the president-elect General Muhammad Buhari to address the issues of insecurity, corruption, unemployment and host of other issues affecting national development. The issue of the abolition of poverty which the National Conscience Party strongly believe in is yet to be dealt with and all hands must be on deck to make sure that there's no poverty in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. While saying no to further the registration of political parties, the meeting called on INEC to rather concentrate on making the nation's elections more credible. The National Conscience Party, among all other 28 political parties, is a strong, formidable force which has believed in the defense of democracy. The National Conscience Party called for reforms at all levels of governance as the nation transits to another administration. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. Meanwhile, the youths were the focus of attention at the Jumat Semen of Imam Harrison Mustafa of the Mambila Barracks, Abuja, in which he enjoined them as the most productive group of the society to use their valuable time for the nation building and improved productivity. Correspondent Ismail Musa reports. <laughs> The Imam enjoined the congregation to use their youthful age and time wisely in the service of the nation productively, as he emphasized that service to humanity is service to God, reminding that each day in the life of a Muslim faithful requires special prayers and thanksgiving, especially now as the nation looks forward to a transition of government and a quest for socioeconomic development and prosperity. To ensure a sustained socioeconomic development, the Imam Hamisu Mustafa called on Muslim Ummah to pray for peaceful coexistence of the nation and also prayed for God's guidance in the country's leadership. We said it in our prayer and we encourage Muslims, those who fast today, or those, those who are going to recite the Holy Quran, or those who are, are going to pray overnight, that they should not forget our country and we have so many challenges in this our country. And we have so many problems that if you pray for yourself and also Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you should also pray for your fellow brother. Pray for everybody. When peace comes, it shower everybody. When uh, calamity comes, it goes on everybody. So we encourage Muslims to pray and also include the nation and also the leaders and also our workers. Among worshippers at the Mambela Barracks Mosque was Nigeria's president-elect, General Muhammad Buhari, and the Kaduna state governor-elect, Malam Nasiru El Rufai, in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And as the nation gears up for the democratic transition of government with agenda setting for the incoming administration, the Muslim Umar has been urged to use the teachings of their faith in the promotion of peace and unity in the country as a platform for good governance towards functional development of the people. This is contained in the Friday summon by Imam Muhammad Binu Yahaya at the Sharia Court of Appeal, Jumat Mosque, Apo Abuja. Muhammad Hamza Sheikh reports. Unity among the people is a cardinal principle that is accorded prominence in all affairs in the Islamic parlance. In many verses of the chapters of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoins unity and frowns at disunity which renders human effort fruitless. The example of such unity is found in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the early days of Islam in the city of Madinatul Munawwara when he directed both immigrants and residents to be their brother's keepers. As Nigeria transits into another democratic dispensation, Imam Muhammad bin Yahya urges Nigerians to be guided by these Quranic and prophetic injunctions so as to ensure peaceful coexistence, unity, and positive development. So from an Islamic point of view, any unity, any coming together, togetherness, should be the positive one. 
that what the Prophet Sallallahu preached, and it has been the legacy that has been bequeathed to us, that you come together, whether in politics, in administration, in business, etc., etc. While advising members of the congregation to repent from all evil ways and lead pious life, the Imam said it is the only way Allah Ta'ala will bless the unity among the people. If it is based on cleanliness, righteousness, you are rest assured you will be able to choose and select the best material. And it's only the genuine and best material that can be used for better development. The congregation also prayed for continued peace, unity and progress of the nation. In Abuja, Muhammad Hamza Sheikh, NTA News. And back to labor matters now. Workers in River State have joined their counterparts across the globe today to celebrate May Day with a call for understanding of their responsibilities to national rebirth and development. Ogidi Onyekere reports. With the team, the working class democratic consolidation and economic revival, chatting away to national rebirth, is anchored on reawakening the understanding of workers that they plant the seed to build the Nigeria of their dream. Governor Chibike Amechi, represented by the head of service, Mr. Samuel Long John, acknowledged the contributions of river state workers towards national development. That we will do our part in turn and all the problems we have listed, you know, do all that we need to do. State NLC Chairperson Mrs. Beatrice Itubo and TUC Chairman Mr. Chika Onwebu lauded the workers for their turnout in spite of the excruciating working conditions faced in the state. They appealed to the state government to look into training and retraining of staff, prompt payment of salaries and remittance of check-off dues, as well as the judiciary crisis in the state. Some workers thanked God for seeing another Workers' Day, expecting that the incoming administration will put workers' welfare first. In Port Harcourt, NTA News. Abdullahi has more on the Workers' Day celebration from our Lagos Network Centre. Hello, Abdullahi. Happy Workers' Day. Happy Workers' Day. Happy Workers' Day to you, Rhoda, and thanks for joining us here in Lagos. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola has urged labor unions in the country to organize workshops that will help train and build capacity for its members to meet their various challenges. The governor made this remark at the 2015 Workers' Day celebration in Lagos. Tunde Saiki was at the Onukon Stadium, venue of the event, and he brought back this report. The workers from various unions gathered at the Onukon Stadium to celebrate their day. The state governor Babatunde Fashola while thanking them for their cooperation throughout his tenure as the governor of the state, said similar support should be extended to the incoming governor. He urged them to explore other options instead of strike in achieving their aims. Labor must resolve to sacrifice. Labor must resolve to participate. Labor must resolve to be a part of the solution. Labor must resolve not to be a part of the problem. Lagos State Council Chairman of the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress appealed to the government to improve the welfare of the workers by providing the necessary social infrastructure. The first thing the party gives is to ensure that the compressed salary structure is elongated. We want a government that will provide the basic environment for the manufacturing sector. The great workers' expectation is to promise them a better life and to fulfill the life. The theme for the 2015 May Day celebration is the working class democratic consolidation revival charting a way to national rebirth. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Reprieve might soon be on the way for motorists in some major cities across Nigeria as National Association of Transport Owners, NATO, has agreed to start lifting petrol and product with effect from tonight. The Executive Secretary of the Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, Moman, disclosed this, uh, that it has struck a deal with its transport owners which is expected to lead to a temporary suspension of the strike action by NATO. The report. NATO. 
The temporary lifting of the strike action by the National Association of Road Transport Owners, according to the Executive Secretary of the Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, Moman Obafemi Olaure, was as a result of an agreement reached to pay a part of the 20 billion naira owed NATO in anticipation of the payment of 200 billion naira subsidy owed Moman by the federal government. The executive secretary said a meeting between Moman and the Minister of Finance has been scheduled for Monday. In collaboration with NATO and PTD, this action is being suspended because the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister has agreed to meet us on Monday to look at how the balance of 200 billion will be liquidated. I must say that we are also prepared to pay NATO to the tune of in proportion to what we have received. If we have received the whole payment, we probably will be able to pay all the monies we are owing them. By the way, we are owing them about 20 billion naira. Meanwhile, the scarcity of the product is hitting hard on commuters in Lagos, with black markets selling the product at exorbitant prices. Social and economic activities in the state almost grinding to a halt. And to road safety matters now. Towards raising more awareness on the campaign against road crashes on the Nigerian roads, a mega rally organized by the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, in conjunction with all the stakeholders has been flagged off in Lagos. Tunde Saiki reports that the official flag off was performed by the Lagos State Governor, Baba Tunde Fashola. The rally in Lagos is hinged on the fact that the state accounts for over 40 percent of road crashes in the country. This the core marshal Boboye Uyeyemi said needs the collaboration of stakeholders and government to ensure that the trend is reversed. The causes of the accidents, he advised, must be identified and measures aimed at curbing them must be put in place. He said motorists must avoid overloading and the sale and consumption of alcohol in motor park is still prohibited. He also stressed that offenders will be sanctioned. It's the cleaning into the speed limiting device, use of phone driving and lane violation. The Lagos State Governor, who was represented by the Transport Commissioner, Kyle Diopoefa, said the efforts by the state government have led to the reduction in road crashes by a few percent. He disclosed that members of the road transport unions must ensure that the ban on the use of vehicles popularly called Kurigbe for commercial purposes is still in force. There were good messages from the various road transport unions and drama presentation as well as demonstration of how reflective tapes can be used to avoid crashes into articulated vehicles. The theme of the joint mega rally is towards an enduring safe road culture in Nigeria. It is expected to be replicated in the 36 states of the country. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTN News. Economic expert proffers solution to corruption and tax evasion in Nigeria urges government to show accountability and transparency in the system. Let's now join Amechipas in our business news segment for details. Hello and it's time to talk business. Thanks for being a part of it. I'm Amechi Pires. Corporate offices, banks and the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed for business today. This is in commemoration of Workers' Day. Petty traders and operators of small businesses took advantage of the May Day celebration to sell their goods. In view of the unresolved financial discrepancies in both the public and private sectors of the economy, policymakers in the country have been advised to evolve policies uh, to strengthen relevant institutions like the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to stem the tide of corruption in the country. And this is because corruption has remained the bane of the nation's social economic prosperity. It has to start from ensuring that the, the civil service is such that there's discipline. And it is very, very easy to manage the civil service if there's discipline. So that the private sector will not come in, they will not use the private sector to, to control corruption. Such institutions, experts say, 
must be driven by men and women of integrity and accountability with zero tolerance to corrupt tendencies. We have a specialized branch of accounting called forensic accounting to tell us was our investigation and all. If accountants who are trained to manage money and the economy are getting into elective and executive positions, I think things will be better for this country. They are also of the opinion that those in government must, as a matter of necessity, be patriotic, selfless, and always place the interests of the society above self. And Nigeria is said to be losing more than half of its overall tax revenue due to loopholes in tax collection, as well as tax evasion by organizations and individuals. Tax practitioners therefore suggest the deployment of ICT and harmonization of existing tax laws as some of the ways out of these challenges. Abdullah Mohammed reports. It is no longer news that tax revenues have remained a major sustainer of giant economies across the world. In Nigeria, the headline is on the enormous tax revenue potentials and the various challenges that stifle the country's efforts at collecting at least 90% of its revenues. The challenges experts say arise from the partial implementation of ICT in the process of tax collection, which gives rise to corruption and tax evasion. To be practical, there is need to fully comput computerize the operations of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. They refuse to install appropriate safeguards and therefore at the end of it they allow leakages and distortions. The business community however insists that the harmonization of tax laws especially within the three chairs of government will unify tax collection and put to rest the challenge of tax evasion. The methods of allowing tax holidays experts say have been abused by businesses and therefore needs to be reviewed. So we have to be careful not to infringe on those laws or not to infringe on the rights of these foreign investors. And that's business news. Thanks for watching. The news continues shortly. Think five megabytes, enough to post your favorite pictures of Lucky, your beloved bingo, on the internet. And maybe Lucky could be all the way. Think 10 megabytes. Wow. Let us upload a video of Lucky. Now, Lucky is a YouTube sensation. Okay. 500 megabytes. Ooh. Lucky selfies. Lucky album downloads. Lucky Instagram photo bombs with flavor. Omaomi, and look, it's the band. One gig, watch Lucky take the red carpet live at his new movie premiere, and watch the making of his latest music video featuring Omaomi. You have brought Lucky this far on one gig. Just take a couple of seconds to think how far you're gonna get on Glow Internet. Stay ahead. Upgrade to Glow Mobile Broadband high speed internet for everyone. Enjoy the new all purpose data pack. Use it the way you want. One day pack for 50 naira and seven day pack for 200 naira. At the Nigerian Post Authority, NPA, we value the role of our workforce. That is why we seize this occasion to join other Nigerians in saluting the Nigerian worker. We join them to further dedicate themselves in service of their fatherland. Happy Workers' Day. NPA, a national brand asset and called on service excellence. Corporation NDIC Al Haji Umaru Ibrahim says to improve the operational efficiency of the corporation as a deposit ensure there is need to review the Corporations Act. He said this in a message to the NDIC at the ongoing 36th Kaduna International Trade Fair. Correspondent Ndiang Giang reports. Managing Director NDIC, represented by the Director Asset Management Department. Bashir Dada Umar said the corporation is, among other things, seeking more powers to facilitate prompt settlement of depositors' funds. You can imagine the cry that we are receiving from many of our depositors for, for us to come to their assistance. And just for one reason or the other, because the owners have taken us to court and given our law that you, we cannot proceed to pay them unless we are able to discharge those court cases. So these are the kind of things that made us to believe that really we need to, solve, to have some amendments in our 
our laws. He said the NDIC is working to ensure activities of illegal fund managers not licensed by the corporation are checked. A committee of NDIC, CBN, SEC, uh, police, EFCC, to ensure that really this uh, menace is checked and that really our, our public are not exposed to this kind of danger where they easily part with their money. When we do the best thing we could do, you see is that public awareness. Earlier, the president of Katsima, represented by a council member, Gimba Ibrahim, urged them to ensure that financial regulators go beyond loans recovery, but how functional are borrowers' businesses? In Kaduna, I am Indian and Yang, NTA News. We now join Shehu in our Just Network Center for more on Workers' Day celebration in Plateau State. Thank you, Rhoda. Welcome to JOS. The International Workers' Day in Plateau State was observed today without the usual fanfare. State Chairman of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, Jibrin Manchir, said this was due to the economic and other challenges facing civil servants in the state. Correspondent Ijoma Ozomena reports. Mr. Bancho said among the many contending issues are areas of minimum wage, consistent lack of payment of salaries of members, as well as non-payment of gratuity and pension to retirees. Infrastructure development is not about human life. We cannot base our target development on infrastructure when we neglect human beings with a gallop. Fellow comrades, they it's a sad day for us, and that's why we instructed that we should all tie a black wrist, a black rope in our hand, so that the entire world will not be traumatized over the period. The leader also said the union has directed its affiliate members to mobilize workers for a strike at the expiration of the ultimatum on Monday, the 4th of May, midnight. Now for this strike that is coming up. Monday midnight. It is as a result that this and you agree with us and Congress that it is fair for us to start letting the whole world know that this is the trauma we have gone through over the years. Professor Pam Dunsha of the Political Science Department, University of Jaws, enjoined the workers to remain steadfast even in the midst of the challenges. This year's theme is the working class democratic consolidation and economic revival, charting the way to national rebate. In Jaws, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. And that's it from Jaws. Roda, it's back to you. Thank you, Shehu. And now we take another short break when we return Global Tidbits and Sports Update. Stay with us. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control. Now, dark they bring on this message.
Welcome back. You're still watching the network news here on the NTA. On Global Tip Beats tonight, Kenya increases workers' minimum wage by 12%. And Nepal's authority fear disease outbreak and earthquake survivors makeshift camp. Plus, Freddie Gray's that termed a homicide case by Baltimore State Persecutor as six policemen arrested. These are more with Chimdima and the BC. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has increased by 12% the workers' minimum wage. The president also acknowledged contributions of the workforce towards improving the country's economy. Meanwhile, workers in many countries staged demonstrations to mark International Workers' Day, some of them turning violent, like in Turkey, where police detained about 140 protesters as they clashed with the police. And Papua New Guinea has of late been encountering natural disasters. First was the recent flooding, and now second largest earthquake has hit the nation within 24 hours. In another development, six policemen in Baltimore, United States, are facing murder and other charges following the death of Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old black man who died in police custody. Investigations into the incident revealed that after what the state prosecutor called Freddy's illegal arrest, he was not restrained by a seat belt while in police van, thereby causing him to hit his head on a bolt and suffered a brain damage that led to his death. That's Global Tidbits. Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. And now sports update with Ayodeji Makindi. Newly appointed Acting Director General of the National Sports Commission, Al Hassan Yakmut, has assured staff of the Commission that their welfare will be made top priority. In an interactive session on Thursday, Yakmut pledged that training as enunciated by government policy will be given priority attention. Priority attention. The Nigerian National League Limited expects airing club sites to fulfill the requirements of registration for the 2014-2015 league season after the kickoff was postponed for two weeks. The appeals from those clubs is that uh, they should be given a little time to assess their governments for funding. I don't know whether two weeks will be enough, but the league has to start. Hostilities will begin this weekend in the Elite Nigeria Women League as Delta Queens face Confluence Queens. Oshun Babes will host Ibom Angels. FC Robo will confront Bayelsa Queens as Edo Queens welcome Nasarawa Amazons. Meanwhile, African Women Footballer of the Year Azizat Oshuala is also in a short list of five to claim the 2015 BBC Women Footballer of the Year Award. The past year has been nothing short of a fairy tale for the former FC Robo player who won all the individual accolades of the Canada 2014 Women's Under-20 World Cup. I think it's a very good thing for women's football. It would to really help us, you know, encourage us more to do a lot of things. Away from football, undefeated Floyd Mayweather says against his usual game plan, he's going to come out swinging and be the aggressor early against Manny Pacquiao when they meet in Saturday's Super Fight in Las Vegas. However, Pacquiao's